in this uh, session i'll be taking you through the basic concept of object oriented programming because excel vba is typically an object oriented programming language and for that matter nowadays lot of programming languages in the world are object oriented so it is different from your structural programming languages now how it is different and how we should really look at this object oriented programming when we are using with respect to vba is what is the major focus i am not covering again all the properties and everything associated with the uh, object oriented programming but a very basic overview which helps you to correlate things with the excel vba programming so what this object oriented programming means and how do i link this concept of object oriented programming to the vba world and what are the different uh, important uh, keywords that we cover when we talk about object oriented programming what are the properties of the objects what are the methods of the objects and what are the different collections so these three key terms also i am going to introduce to you and the whole example will be driven with respect to excel vba now any object oriented program is nothing but it's a software application which contains various objects think of objects as a real world objects right then you can correlate things more easily with respect to any program think of a real world object like a car that's a real world object now this particular object has so many features this features is what we call as properties in the software programming world we call them as properties now what are the features associated with the car <coughs> probably the color of the car right the length of the car the fuel capacity of the car or probably i can even uh, think of the fuel efficiency of the car i can think of engine size so these are some of the properties that can be associated with an object any real world object has some kind of features probably even a human being is a real world object what are the uh, what are the properties or the features associated with a human being he has a length he has a height he has a weight he has so many other things so those are the properties and similarly every on all real world objects we have some actions every real world of, of, of every real world object we have some actions or probably you call them as users whereas the programming world calls them as methods what are the users the car can be used for driving or probably you can think of lot of other things you do with the car now so which means any real world object has a set of features called as properties and a set of users called as methods that's the same way that that is the concept that is coming to the object oriented programming as such now in an excel sheet right if i am talking about let's say an excel workbook right or probably i talk about a single worksheet so there are some properties for this worksheet let's say the name sheet 1 right and what else uh, the the uh, the background color probably white the so some such kind of stuff the location is it where is it located it's to the left or to the right or where it is so these are some of the properties associated with a particular worksheet then what are the uh, then what are the different uh, methods that i can do on that worksheet 
that worksheet I can delete or that worksheet I can modify that worksheet I can select lot of things I can do with this particular worksheet so the moment you start thinking each each uh, element as a real world entity you can link the object oriented programming language quite comfortably so in excel all these are different kinds of objects worksheet is a separate object chart is a separate object pivot table is a separate object drawing shapes separate object workbook separate object cell so you could see that there are hundreds or thousands of objects that are there with respect to Excel. And each object has some set of properties as we are talking of chart. Okay. What is the name of the chart? Probably chart 1. What is the type of the chart? Probably a bar chart. So there are properties associated with it. What is the location of the chart? At some location. Similarly, I can talk about uh, the properties. Uh, these are the properties. Now I can think of the methods on the chart. Delete a chart. Add color to the chart. Add border to the chart. So these are some of the uh, methods that I can perform on the chart. So like that, if you start visualizing every Excel feature I can call it as an object and which has some set of properties and some set of methods that can be performed on them. So if you are talking of one single cell, that cell is having a property like address. What is the color? Now probably the, so the existing color is the property. But change color, I can change the color of that particular cell. That's the kind of a method that I am performing on it. So this is what is the overall perspective of object-oriented programming. So basically everything is talked in terms of objects and how these objects are typically manipulated based on their qualities. What is the kind of interaction that exists between the different objects? That is what is the whole framework of object-oriented programming and when we are doing the programming in VBA also, our focus is more driven towards this object-oriented programming. So it's, it's quite easy to use, but the only thing is our visualization should be more from that particular perspective. That is the reason we need to understand the object-oriented programming concept. So, so this is where the heart of the VBA usage of Excel is coming, which is what is called as an object model. So even when you have recorded, you will see that, okay, active workbook, then we have a worksheet, then we are talking about a range. So some kind of a hierarchical in terms of the model. So that is what we talk about. The object model of Excel is more hierarchical in design. So every VBA action that we are performing, that is sending the notification to the Excel. And as we have seen in Excel, you have seen in the object browser also, there are so many objects, right? It's, it's very difficult for you to remember all of them. But the easiest thing, as we have said, if you understand it on a broader perspective, performing it is not a big difficulty. Right, because there is a lot of recording that is happening. All you need to know is how to really understand that code and how to edit it wherever required. So in Excel, as we have already discussed earlier, application object is at the top, which talks about the entire Excel application. This is not the workbook. Excel application may contain more workbook, one or more workbooks. And each workbook can contain one or more worksheets and each worksheet can contain one or more ranges or cells. So that is the typical hierarchy we talk about. So there is a workbook followed by a worksheet and each worksheet can have different ranges. So even when uh, the coding is being done, we do it in this order itself. So we say application dot active workbook dot active worksheet 
dot range a1 dot value. But in some cases, what happens is I can omit all these things. And I, if I, I may simply write range a1 dot value equal to hello. Now what happens in this process? When I have done something like this, what typically happens is the smartness of the VBA assumes that you are in the current active workbook. So there are some assumptions it is making. So whatever is the workbook that is currently open is called as active workbook. Within that, whatever the sheet that you have opened is called as an active sheet. So whatever is the sheet that is latestly open that is taken as an active sheet and in that particular sheet it will put a1 value as hello. It could be sheet 2, it could be sheet 3, whatever. But if you are, if you want it only in sheet 1, then explicitly you require this piece, you can't omit this piece. So in some cases if it is omitted, then it means it is taking the default which is the current last active kind of uh, the sheet or a book. If it, is, uh, if, if it needs to be specified in a particular location, it's better that I explicitly go, uh, explicitly write the entire path, not the shortcut. Because VBA by default will consider the active workbook and the active worksheet. Now, any object that you are adding to the workbook, VBA is actually, so if you put like some kind of a button on your workbook, VBA is behind the scene. All the default values, now we have seen when we are doing a sort, whatever, there are so many things that I did not select. By default, the header is selected, right? Or by default, the ascending to descending is selected. I did not select it, but... Whatever are the defaults that are there, all those are taken as a part of the code. That is what when we do a small sort, we see a big list of code coming up because all the defaults are there, which we did not uh, make any changes. But while taking it into the code, it considers all those default activities as well. That is where you see for one single action, you write a big, uh, you get a big list of code and some of, the, some of them you did not even... Uh, select them, you would be wondering why those things are coming as a part of the code. Because there are so many defaults associated with each activity that we have performed and all those defaults also are captured as a part of the code. Now, as I have said, every object has two important uh, uh, pieces. One is the properties, the other one is the methods. So, how the object looks like is what are the properties of it. So, if I am talking about a cell object, I can look at the color. These are all, or whether it is logged or not. What is the name of the sheet for a sheet object? I am seeing what is the name of that sheet. What is the tab color of that sheet? So, these are different kinds of properties that I am talking of. Right, so for every sheet object, I can have some properties. For every cell object, I can have some properties. So that is what we are able to look at. Similarly, when I talk about the methods, so if I am talking about a range, range is an object. Range will have some properties and some of the methods. I clear the contents of that range. That's a method. That's an action that I am performing on that range. Or worksheet, which is sheet 2. Sheet 2 is the name of the worksheet which I wanted to activate. So, our pivot table, right? I am looking at worksheet sheet 1. In that sheet 1, I am looking at a pivot table which is pivot table 2. Uh, that, so, this is an object. Sheet 1 contains pivot table 2 as an object. And within that pivot table 2 object, we are having a a pivot cache dot refresh. I am refreshing the pivot cache of that pivot table. So an object within an object and finally the smallest object I am looking at the method of that object and I am doing a refresh. So this is the typical structure that we see when we are writing any piece of code. 
So when when it is recording, it's fine. But if I have to write it, make sure that this kind of a hierarchy is traditionally maintained. Now, before I end this basic understanding, I wanted to talk about even uh, the word collection because uh, there are uh, in general in Excel there are two kind of objects. There is a workbook object. and there is workbooks object similarly we have worksheet then we have worksheets right so whenever i have, where do i need to use what so especially if i am talking about a group of like objects group of workbooks right workbook each workbook is an object but if i am talking about a group of workbooks it's a grouping object that grouping object is called as a collection so i have workbooks as an object which talks about a group of workbooks and within each workbook again the each workbook is a separate uh, object so a group of object is called as a collection worksheet one single worksheet is an object like this there could be three worksheets so three different objects if i have to do some kind of collective work on these three worksheets i'll use an object called worksheets which is a collection object right so especially if i want to take some action on all the objects some action on each workbook separate on each worksheet separately i have to name each worksheet separately i have to give a different name to each worksheet then i'll start with the worksheets object i say for each sheet that is present in the worksheets change the name so i do not even need to know how many objects are there within it i do not need to know specifics of each of the worksheet here because i am doing the same thing across all the worksheets so wherever i want to do some set of action across all the like objects that is where i can use them as a collection object generally they are seen with a plural names object a collection of different name objects charts object collection of different chart objects like that workbooks worksheets so you find so many objects which are the collection objects so we really need to differentiate where i am using uh, the collection object and where i am using an individual object because uh, the the coding wise there is a lot of difference between the two so that's where uh, uh, the brief overview of the object oriented uh, programming should uh, get you started with the vba programming aspect per se so you know now what are the properties of the objects what are the methods what are the collections so we'll start using them as a part of our coding process all right thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session thank you very much